all of the concerns that my friends are raising are in the what if category and I don't really worry about the what ifs. I just want to enjoy my life with the love of my life in a slower pace near the ocean. Hello my friends, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with more from this season's 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way Season 4. And today again we're going to be talking about new couples and there's quite a lot for us to get our teeth into. And so the first couple I'm going to speak about today are Danielle, who's from New York and her husband, Johan, who's from the DR. Now guys, I've just realised that this couple have actually featured on 90 Day Fiancé before on the Love in Paradise franchise. Now, I didn't cover this and I've yet to see it. However, it would seem to me that this couple have begun their relationship with a smorgasbord of lies. Danielle wants to escape the rising costs of New York and move to DR. But unsurprisingly, Johan, well, he wants to uh, make his fame and fortune in the good old US of A. And this is where it gets interesting because Danielle's going to live with Johan whilst they allegedly apply for his visa. But guys, he has absolutely no idea that she wants to stay there for good. And so he thinks she's coming over just for a few months. Oh lord. <laughs> guys, what could go wrong? But just before we get into this shit show, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've yet to do so. And a massive, massive thank you to everyone who's subscribed thus far. I really do appreciate it. But if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button and smash that like button and help your girl out. Thanks guys. Right, so without further ado, I give you Danielle and Johan. So first we catch up with Danielle, who's currently in New York. As she walks around the city, she lets us know that New York's like a toxic boyfriend. You can't get away from him. You love him so much, but he's making your life worse. And guys, I get what she's saying. New York is very, very expensive. But my sympathy for Danielle's capped at about, well, 15% because she can quite easily just move to another cheaper city. How can I put this delicately? This isn't going to go well for you, Danielle. Johan wants to come to New York, and I'm pretty certain that's one of the overriding reasons that he's with you. Without the lure of a green card and the opportunity for a new life and money, I've got a feeling Johan's love for you might well dissipate. And Danielle lets us know that she feels that in New York, everything's dirty, everything's expensive, and everything's a struggle. Oh dear, Danielle, what sort of toxic boyfriends have you been going out with? <laughs> Pretty toxic. They don't sound ideal. She lets us know she wants to swap the New York City grind for Johan's grind. <laughs> I think you'll find Johan's grind will become just as toxic as the New York City grind the moment he realises he has no access to the US of A. So Danielle's a teacher and she's also a yoga and wellness instructor. And so apparently Danielle's had a whole host of failed relationships and marriages and she's been a single parent. Her son now has flown the nest. And so last year she went to the DR and that's where she met what she describes as her Prince Charming. Johan's a personal trainer. Surprise, shock, horror. And as soon as Danielle saw him across the hotel lobby, she said, I'm going to marry that man. It's unclear what Johan thought when he saw Danielle, but more than likely, fingers crossed, she's American. <laughs> Highly, highly likely. And so with this couple, there's a two foot height difference, a 10 year age difference. There's also a religious difference. Johan is Christian and Danielle is, well, she says she practices an African spiritual religion. It's good she's so specific. There's also a language difference. And from what I understand, an expectation of relationship difference. Guys, it's a relationship made in 90 day fiance hell. <laughs> I can't see this one working out, I really can't. And so another difference this couple have, which we've yet to mention, is a financial difference. And apparently when Danielle was with Johan in the DR previously, he ate £200 worth of peanuts from the minibar. Uh, what? He must have eaten his own body weight in peanuts. How's that even possible? Johan ate um, $200 worth of peanuts. I don't really know how that's possible. Johan doesn't even take his wallet out if I'm around. He just expects that if we buy something, I'm going to pay for it. Yo dije, tú no necesitas peanuts a cuatro en la mañana. Si tengo hambre a cuatro en la mañana, a las cuatro voy a comer. Uh, what? If he's hungry at 4am, he's going to eat at 4am. What? $200 worth of peanuts? Guys, he must be out of his mind. This is completely ridiculous. I have a feeling that Johan's going to run Danielle's wallet. 
and so despite wanting to live in two different countries, the couple still got married, and it seems like they had rather a nice beach wedding. And so back in New York, Danielle tells two of her yoga clients, the big news. And to say they're surprised is an understatement, and one of her friends says the following. Let me get this straight. You met a man while on vacation, Mm-hmm. You spent a couple of days with him, got engaged, are now married, and you're leaving everything to go be with him. That is accurate. That's an accurate statement. As you repeat it back to me, it sounds really crazy, but it doesn't feel crazy just in my body. Just a little, <laughs> just a touch. Uh, Danielle, it sounds really crazy because it is really crazy. And then her friends both went on to say they're very skeptical about this relationship. But guys, I like the fact that her friends were really blunt with her as to what they thought. I'm afraid that he's a funky funky. A Sanky Panky is a man who works at a resort and is looking for tourists to come and, you know, provide them with money and goods and visas and take care of them and their families. So that's my biggest fear. Well, it seems like her friends have pretty much hit the nail on the head. And guys, between you and me, I think Danielle knows this. Danielle's in deep, deep denial. And so next time we see Danielle, she's meeting up with two more friends, i.e. two more people who think this idea is freaking ridiculous. They ask her a very pertinent question. What are you going to do there? I like to be at the beach. You know me. Okay, we know you like to be at the beach, but not forever. And financially, you're going to be doing... I'll eat mangoes. Uh, what? You like the beach? I like the beach! People like the beach! How are you going to earn money? Well, I guess there's one thing she could do, guys. She could become a peanut seller. (laughs) Seems like there's a pretty penny to be earned in the DR for peanuts. But guys, how can she have no clue what she's going to do? She lets them know, I'm going to teach yoga on the beach. How much do you think you'll earn doing that, Danielle? Oh Lord, she's a clown. And when her friends ask her one more time, how are you going to afford this perfect life on the beach? She said, I'm going to manifest it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the presence of idiocy. And guys, I wonder where she's getting all her ideas from. I think it's either a Christmas cracker or a fortune cookie. Guys, I have zero expectations from people on 90 Day Fiancé, but somehow, just somehow, Danielle's managed to let me down. (laughs) Unbelievable. And then Danielle lets us know just how tricksy she is. And when I say tricksy, I mean what a bullshitter she is. Because her friends ask her, does Johan know that you haven't applied for his visa to the States as yet? And she said, well, I think he knows. And they said, does he know? Well, I haven't said that I have got it. And I haven't said that I haven't. But I think he thinks that I am applying. Danielle, you know good and well, he thinks he's going to live in New York and he's not. I did tell Johan that I would apply for the spousal visa so that we can live in the US. But the more times I go back and forth to the Dominican Republic, the more times I realize I don't want to be in New York. Uh, Danielle, so you did say you'd apply. And if you listen to what she's just said, it's I, I, I. I don't want to live there. I'm over it. What about Johan? You know, that guy, your husband. But then she lets us know she's a bona fide idiot when she tells her two friends that if she stayed to work just one more year, she'd gain another $15,000 per annum on her pension. But she's so desperate to be with Johan that she's foregoing that. Both her friends are absolutely dumbfounded and Danielle, well, just remove the founded. I'd like to say it's a decision of an idiot, but I don't think an idiot could possibly be so bloody stupid. So the next time we see Danielle, she arrives in the Dominican Republic and I'm just wondering how she's going to break it to Johan that she has no intention of going back to New York. And so we go over to the DR to meet Johan and we're treated to shots of him in his garden showering under a bucket of cold water. Oh dear, Johan, long may that continue. (laughs) The warm showers of New York are as far away as ever they were. And next up, we're treated to Johan studying his English. He says he does it in his free time. From what I can hear, he very, very rarely has free time. (laughs) In fact, he has no free time at all. For his English leaves, well, quite a lot to be desired. And he bangs on a little bit about how poor it is in the DR and how many opportunities he'll have when he finally gets to New York. And so he goes to meet her at the airport, and they run into each other's arms, and they both seem very, very happy. As they walk towards the car, Johan tells Danielle, you're in Dominican now. Johan, she knows. (laughs) She's just spent hours on a flight there. And so as they're driving along in the car, 
Danielle helpfully reminds Johan that it's beautiful in Dion and that she loves it here. Look at the beaches, look at the water. Oh, by the way, I want to rent an apartment for more than a year because I have no intention of going back to New York. Well, 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 you could have knocked Johan down with a sledgehammer. He says you have a problem because that's not what you told me. Hmm, no, Johan, you have a problem. A Danielle-shaped problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord and spoken like a true new yorker danielle seems to think new york is the only place that you can possibly live in all of america danielle why don't you just go and live in hoboken the ebirds stay there for a few months when she was younger i had quite a good time and it's very very close to new york and it's infinitely cheaper and Johan tells production that daniel doesn't understand what it's like to live in the dr he said you work every day of your life and you have only enough money to live on. Mm, I think she might understand. That pretty much sounds like New York. <laughs> Unless you've got a weighed in job. But nevertheless, I do feel sorry for him because he has somewhat been hoodwinked. And Johan finishes up by saying that he has loads of friends that have moved to America and they've built themselves up from absolutely nothing. And it's one of his dreams. And Danielle's destroying his dream. And that's where we end things with this couple for this week. So what does the eBird make to all of this? Well, I have to say, Danielle's a bit of a shyster. She knows that he wants to move to America. And so I don't know why she can't, I don't know, just decide to live somewhere cheaper than New York. What about Miami? Beautiful beaches and more chilled out life and not as expensive as New York. And guys, I didn't really like the way that she was telling Johan, you don't speak English, you won't be able to get a job. Um, last time I went to America, specifically in fact Miami, 50% of the people there didn't speak English. I think if you're in the UK, maybe it's a problem, but I don't feel like it's a massive problem. In America, there are so many Spanish speaking people. But also I feel like if he moves to the States, he'll learn to speak English quite quickly and it will be much easier for him given that he has an American wife. I think the main problem I have with all of this is not the fact that he wants to get to America. Come on, guys, it's part of the course with these 90 day fiance relationships. But I think the major problem is the fact that she promised him, yes, we're going to go and live in the States. And now she's changed her mind. And in the car at the end, she said, well, I can change my mind if I want. Well, I guess anybody can change their mind. But I think you'll find, Danielle, when you get married, when you're in a relationship, your decisions are no longer just your decisions. You have to make decisions with your husband. I love to make all my own decisions. And I'd absolutely adore it if I never had to consider Mr. Ebird. But unfortunately, I do. Her previous marriage lasted only six months. And if this is her attitude, it's no surprise. I've changed my mind and that's that. And Johan said to her, it's not about you changing your mind. You need to stick to your word. You said we were going to live in the States and now that's what I want to do. So guys, what do you make of all of this? The truth be told, I've got a feeling that she'll be in the DR for, I don't know, six months, maybe even a year. But then I think she'll come to the conclusion that there's not an awful lot of money to be made there. And most of the economy is around tourism. So I think she's going to need to come back to the US in order to make a decent living. Also, I feel that she should just take a sabbatical for a year from teaching. And so then her 401k will be on pause. And if she decides she wants to come back afterwards, she's not going to lose all of her money, that 15 grand a year. But guys, let me know what you think. How do you think it's going to pan out? And do you think that Danielle is out of order for, as she says, changing her mind? Let me know in comments down below and I'll get on with my final video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. Smash it, press it, hit it, caress it. Subscribe, my friends, subscribe. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day.